We serve a God that hasn't failed us yet. That is a great thing to celebrate, church. You know, sometimes you know, we're singing these songs. We can just sing them on autopilot, but just appreciate some of the line of those songs about how his promises still stand. Great is his faithfulness. Great is our God's faithfulness. And church, this morning, we're going to be celebrating some of God's faithfulness as we actually commissioned Judy into the new role of campus pastor. So we've got a lot of celebrating to do. Now, a uh, little introduction, kids in the room, you're hanging out with us today. So we've got some kids packs that uh, Lyndall's going to bring around. So uh, they'll, they'll come around. So stay where you are and they'll come. And any spare ones are up for grabs for the adults. So anyone that needs a little, you know, active listening exercise, it's right there for you. Uh, so kids, that's coming around. And uh, I want to welcome everybody here, those who are, who are regulars, but we have some guests here this morning joining us for the commissioning. So welcome. Thank you for coming and being a part of church today. And I also want to welcome those from Austral um, who are joining us on the live stream. So Austral, I know you're waving back at me right now, but uh, we're saying good morning. And uh, it's great to have you part of this because this is a whole church celebration and a whole church milestone. Uh, and actually, I better just check. Sarah and Daryl, they can see me at Austral. Am I sitting in an okay spot? Give me a thumbs up in the air, Sarah, if I'm good. Yep, that's a little thumbs up from over the tech desk, so I know I'm good. Thanks. Just want to make sure that they can see what's going on here. So look, today we're doing something different. So we're, I mean, we're pausing our God is Teaching series for today, and we will resume that next week. Um, and so today is going to be some updates and some stories and testimonies as we celebrate what God is doing in an important season of transition for us. So we are commissioning Judy into the role of campus pastor at Campbelltown, but in a very real sense, we're also commissioning our church into a brand new season because we are changing the way we think. We are changing the way that we operate. And so in many ways, this is a new start for Campbelltown and for Austral, for what we look like as a church family moving forward. Now, to give you some context for the role of campus pastor, I want to explain a bit about our church and how it works so you can see where this fits in and where this involves you. So this role of campus pastor that we are appointing Judy into, it's significant and it's actually historic because it is the first time in our church's history that we've ever appointed someone to this role. And so we've had many other team members over the year and many roles that we filled you know, many times over, youth pastors and worship leaders and associate pastors. But this is different because this is a brand new role for our church. And the reason why we have had to set this role in place is because the ministries of our church has outgrown the structures that we had. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That the ministry of our church was outgrowing the structures that we had. I mean, we didn't have a structure that allowed us to grow in this way. And so in response to what God has been doing in our church, we've had to make some changes. And to me, they're the best changes when you have to try to keep up with what God is doing in our church community. So what I want to do is I just want to give you some pictures and images to understand the structure and the changes. And once I've done that, we're going to get Judy up here and uh, draw out some God stories. So uh, I just want to bring up the first slide, please. So I want you to understand a little bit about the way that you know, our, our church has been structured over the years. Now, we've got a governance team, our board and elders. Um, we've had senior pastors even long before me. And in the Campbelltown Church, we've had all kinds of different ministry areas and teams. Now, what I've written there is not exhaustive. I just wanted to get, get the cogs whirling about the kinds of things that happen in the life of our church. And in each of those things listed, we have team leaders. We have, you know, whether it's um, people that are volunteering or on staff, whole groups of people working together in each of those ministry areas. Now, the way that this structure has worked historically you know, you've got a team leader in charge of each of those areas, and those team leaders are cared for by the senior pastor. And so in my role as senior pastor, I'm doing the best I can to try and care for the various leaders and people that are holding ministry positions in the life of our church. And this is how many churches are set up and structured. But you'll notice that there's some things that have changed. So we'll go to the next slide. Something happened. We added Austral to the mix. And of course, Austral comes with its own ministry activities and people that are serving and, and, and are working in ministry over there as well. So there's op shops and girls brigades and there's all tech and worship and everything over there at Austral. And so for this temporary time that we've had up until now, again, I've got my fingers in a lot of different pies. And so I'm doing the best I can to care for and work with the various 
leaders that we have in our church. Because remember, as you look at this, you're not looking at ministries that I personally am on the ground for. I'm looking to care for those who are stewarding those ministries. And we've gotten to this point now where I look at this and go, there's actually more there, way more there than I can personally juggle and care for. And I want to make sure that the, the people who lead ministries in this church, the people that serve in ministries in this church are well cared for. And so this is why we're needing to make some changes. Now, there's been some benefits to a model like this. The benefits is I've got a pretty good understanding of what's happening in all the different ministry areas, and I'm hearing stories and feedback. But the limitation is, is that I personally can't be everywhere at once. And the limitation is, is that I actually think those who lead in ministry need more investment, need more care, and need more support. Now, I don't see this as a bad thing. I actually see when I reach my limitations as a God thing to go, actually, we need to keep empowering more people into ministry more people into leadership in this church. And for me, last year, it was illustrated by this really funny like uh, two-day period that I had. So across two days, which I, probably 16 working hours, let's call it that, I ran a funeral, I visited a newborn baby, I ran a pre-marital counseling session, I wrote a sermon, I net networked with local pastors in the area, and I did some strategic planning for offshore. Oh, and there was a policy we reviewed that day too. <laughs> And I'm just giving that to you as a bit of an insight, but you know, I'm pretty good at keeping things to time frames. but it was about shifting categories and not able to being able to be with everybody that I wanted to be with. And so for me, that's part of the reason why we're now making some changes. And let's be honest, a lot has changed for our church in these last few years. Like if you look at just what has happened in our church since COVID-19 and resuming, we've made a lot of changes. We're now starting to function as a multi-site. So we're now thinking about two geographical locations. No one person can be anywhere. We've had new people that have come and joined our church. So there's so many new relationships that we're forming, new opportunities to get to hear people's stories and see what God is doing. And we've been doing renovations and projects and the Austral renovations are going well, by the way. Um, they're not too far away from the insides being complete. So I know the Austral congregation will be cheering about that fact. So a lot has changed. And so church, it's time to multiply. It's actually time to multiply. We can't just go with addition anymore. Multiplication is going to be the way that we need to move forward. As a church, we need to be able to multiply our leadership. We need to be multiplying our systems and our structures and ultimately multiplying our capacity to serve the community that God has entrusted us with. Because God has entrusted us together as a church family with a mission in our communities to love God and to love others and to make disciples. And so we want to make sure as a church that we keep reaching our potential in that way. Now, all through Scripture, we see examples of leaders passing on the baton, multiplying themselves. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Does anyone know the story of Moses and Jethro? Um, Moses and Jethro. So in the Old Testament, and Moses, he's got the God's people in the Exodus. And Jethro comes up and says, you can't manage all of this. It's not good for you. It's not good for everybody else. And so we see Moses start to appoint people into positions of leadership to care for the needs of their community. If you're reading the New Testament, look at the, uh, the Apostle Paul. And he's um, constantly empowering other people. And we've got letters to Timothy and Titus. And he empowers Barnabas and others. And so the Apostle Paul is always setting people up and empowering them to care for different ministries in the New Testament church. And hey, we see Jesus when he ascends. He actually says, you know what? My part on this earth here is done, but yours is just beginning. You know, he gives us the spirit and says, you go and make disciples of all the nations. And he empowers us and he passes on the baton to us so that we together may go and make disciples. And so all through scripture, we see people empowering and appointing so that they can serve better, care for people better, and reach people better. And so what's changing for us? Well, church, this next slide here is our new structure that we're starting to set up. Now, what you'll see is there's two roles here in red. And what that means is those are roles that are not fulfilled and may not be for several years. So we are setting up a structure for the future of our church. And so what we are doing is starting to put things into some categories. We have an Austral community. We have on one side there, 
we have a bunch of logistical things that happen in church. The admin, finances, work, health and safety, building maintenance. You know, there's a lot of that stuff that goes into church life. So that's coming into a category. And we have the Campbelltown community here. And in, on top of each category, what we slowly want to do is be appointing leaders who can focus on those ministry areas and caring for the leaders, the congregation, and the matters that are important in those key areas. And so this morning, as we appoint Judy into the role of campus pastor, I wanted you to see this image so you could start to see what is changing and what is different. Because it is a brand new way of thinking and a brand new way of structuring our church. But what this is doing is enabling us to multiply, to multiply our leadership and to multiply our capacity to serve one another and to serve our community. And so if I was just to speak for a moment to the role of campus pastor for Judy, the language that I've been saying to Judy is in this role, her role is to care for the flock at Campbelltown to care for the flock, to care for the people in the congregation, those that are serving, those that are part of church, and those in our community, to care for the flock. Now, this doesn't mean that Judy will be doing everything. We have teams and so many incredible people serving the life of our church. And so part of what Judy is going to be doing is trying to empower them, soul care for some of them, you know, rally people around prayer or discipleship and some of these things. And Judy will be able to focus exclusively on the Campbelltown flock. And one day, Austral, hear me say this, one day we then want to appoint a peer role, the same role, over at the Austral campus. And hopefully that day is not too far away. So this is where it all fits in. Now, I've taken up enough time with that, but I just wanted you to be clear because it's new and it's different. And now you can start to see where Judy fits into the mix. So... Can we please give a warm welcome to Judy Francis to come and join me on the stage? Come on up, Judy. Thanks, Lindor. Come on up. <laughs> I, I need a handbag. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get your microphone as well. You got that? She comes with a lot of props. I guess it's going to be a long message, huh? <laughs> uh, that one should already be on, I think. Yep. You're good Thank to you. go. All Hello. right. <laughs> Pull up a chair, Judy. I feel like I needed a handbag to bring all my stuff. <laughs> but you know, every time I do a sermon, I have props. So all my props have come with me today. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a God story in all of, of the props. Course so is. Of course there is. We're going to get to that. So what we're going to do for the next couple of minutes is I just want to interview Judy because there's a lot of story and testimony that's led to this point. And I actually think there's so much benefit hearing from the God moments that have been happening for Judy. So we'll, we'll ask some questions together. And then at the end, we're going to lay hands and pray for Judy. So Judy, um, your, your journey towards this role has had a stack of different God moments. And I know we can't possibly fit them all in. Um, but how has God been confirming your calling to this role recently? Um, I, uh, well, there's a lot of God moments. And I think some of you have heard that as I've shared about how God speaks through our life circumstances. Um, so a couple of things I probably wanted to share today is that um, the, uh, I had an appointment with Ryan one day and he was going to talk to me about a new job that he was going to offer me. And I was driving to work and stopped at a red light, which is what you do. Um, stopped at a red light and uh, there was a bus uh, to my left and it said, the next step to your dream job. <laughs> and um, and I, I was like, is that you, God? Is that, is that, of like, is that you, God? Um, and I was like, no, I, I did say no. But like I filed it, you know, um, that mm. like a bus that says the next step to your dream job. Mm. Like, come on. Mm. Um, like th those lines or oh, how early in this do you want me to start crying is the question. Um, <laughs> the lines in that song that you made a way where there was no way. Mm. And I look back at my, my story and there was no way to mm. be here in this mm. position. Mm. Um, but God made a way, like he's faithful to his promises. I'm going on to the next questions. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I saw that sign on the bus and then um, had a, a meeting with Ryan to say, like, would this be the job? Like, is this a job that you'd be interested in? And, uh, and then I just cried. So um, he's really good with tears. <laughs> Tissues. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, just, I like cried. I don't know if that was a good first start to um, <laughs> this is your job as campus pastor. Um, but I, I loved the, that he, he said, um, 
which made me cry more, is that <laughs> the one-liner is that um, you are to shepherd the flock here. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Um, and I, um, one of my colleagues who will not know that she said this, well, no, no she'll, she'll know she said this, but the day after that meeting that we had, yeah. one of my colleagues came into my office and she's like, if they offer you a job, you better take it. <laughs> uh, let, you can guess who that yes, is. Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, but like, I was like, oh, because right after that meeting, Ryan was like, discern and see, you know, mm. if this is... Um, what God is is mm. calling you into, and mm. I was like, there was no question. Mm. With all the movements that God had led me mm. into this position, mm. there was no question about discerning more. Mm. Although I did talk to a couple of people, and then the, my colleague, she helped with the discernment process that day as well, because um, he said, "Watch out for signs." And yeah, <laughs> she's an amazing colleague. She she doesn't even know when she's speaking God's word. <laughs> um, so yeah, is that that's the awesome. answer to that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need. A, does anyone else need a bus? By any chance, because those buses sound amazing to have it written in writing right there. <laughs> but I, I wanted to draw this out because these things just don't happen in a vacuum. And when we're discerning things together, we have to keep an eye out for the God activity around us. And if I was to add just another piece of the God activity, I mean, we brought this role to you as a church community, and we said it was a discernment process and it involved an opt-in with that $20 challenge. Right? So the decision really as to what we were going to do was in the hands of the community. And again, the community has responded so faithfully and generously. And to me, I, I just add that onto what Judy's saying here, and I just see God's fingerprints just smeared all over this opportunity, not just for Judy, but for what it represents for us as a church community. And to me, that's exciting. So I'm curious. So um, again, we're not doing the God is series, but we've been learning a lot about the character and nature of God. So as you've been going through this process, what have you been learning about God? So much. Um, just his kindness, uh, mm. definitely his faithfulness, that uh, he who's promised is faithful. It's like you can, you can live in the word and you can sit in his presence and, and hear it. And so much of me believed the word and I can believe it for other people. Mm. But then to, um, to actually know that he would be faithful to me, that... Uh, that I would sit in his goodness. And, and I think one of my favourite names for God is El Rohi, that he sees. He's the God that sees you. Mm. And I always used to hold that, that, um, that, that you see me, God, even if a man doesn't see me, mm. that you see me. Mm. And um, I think through this it's just, I guess, confirmed and affirmed that, that God sees us. Like in the wilderness he goes out to us and he just constantly pursues us. Mm. He constantly pursues us, like mm. each of us. He wants our heart and he wants it whole, all of it. Uh-huh. Mm. And he sees us in the darkness where one of my friends, um, and I've been telling people this story because I'm just blown away by my story, mm. blown away by my own story. Um, but, and she was like, oh, it's like other people have not seen you before and it's like God has set it aside for this time mm. that, that you would be seen at this time mm. for such a time as this. Mm. 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 that's God's faithfulness on display because again behind all this I've been praying for some time going God would you bring the right person like God we need to multiply our leadership God I can't fit it all in (laughs) and so I've been praying behind the scenes and if I was to connect the dots when Rachel went on maternity leave I was always praying that God would you bring us someone who wouldn't just be here to fill a gap for a season would you bring someone that could maybe take on a role (laughs) afterwards I never knew what the role was going to be, but that was the prayer. So I look back at God's faithfulness in that journey for us as a church last year and see how that is now, you know, bearing fruit in this season as well. I mean, God is just so faithful through this entire story. Um, Judy, I'm confused. What does a campus pastor do? (laughs) Maybe I'm confused as well. Um, uh, Well, I, I think I just, I, I love the one-liner that you gave me. Mm. So that, that is my heart, that mm. I would shepherd the flock. Mm. Um, and, yeah, that's mm. really, that's my one-liner. Mm. And um, I, fe- I feel like God has, like I've always had a pastoral ha- heart mm. and I don't think it's a hat that I take off mm. having this role. Like mm. I know we talk about having different hats on at different times and yeah. I think I've just been sitting in, um, actually it's not a hat that I take off. Like I just care about people's souls. Mm. Like I care about their walk with God mm. and or their walk with, with, without God. Like mm. I just care about people's souls. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I, 
the campus pastor will be shepherding the flock. Mm. Um, and also, I, these were why I have props today. Mm. <laughs> because um, I don't know if you remember, but I... Uh, sorry. Uh, I did a, a message on everyone being part of a puzzle. Like everyone being a piece in the puzzle. Who remembers that message? And, and I, I've just been thinking about that, that every time I've spoken, I think I've shared a bit of who I am. Uh, I think you've, you've probably got to know who I am. And, like, I really think that, like, one of, I would say, my giftings is to, to see the gift in other people and to help mm. them to grow into that. And um, just that, you, that everyone matters, like every single person has a gift to offer, mm. has a reflection of God to offer to the world. Mm. So that would be one of my, my bents towards people's formation and intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. And I think um, one of the things, yeah. one of the messages I did was uh, for, with my whole heart for my whole life. Mm. Um, I don't know if you remember that, another one. Um, and I think that's, that's who I am is that I, I, I love God with all that I am and mm. I want everybody else to come along with me mm. because he is so good that I've tasted and seen of mm. his goodness and mm. I want everyone to experience that. Mm. So, so these are some of the things that you're going to get and mm. I did Jenga the other, um, <laughs> <laughs> the other week. We've been playing board games. Uh, yeah, look, I've just become a, a, a girl that plays with things since I've been yeah. at this church. Um, so That's great. Um, the Jenga is about who God is and, and I love that we would all encounter the fullness of who he is mm. because there's so much to him and I think as we live our lives we can have so many blockages and not know the fullness of who he is. So mm. some of my bent as being a campus pastor will be how do we get to know him more? Mm. How do we get to know ourselves more in that piece of the puzzle? Mm. So they would be some of the, I That's think, my great. leans. Um, yeah. And prayer, obviously, just will be um, coming home hard. <laughs> we will start to do lots of prayer things <laughs> um, because that is my passion. And I think it's my passion because I feel like it's just a sweet spot to be in communion with God. Mm. Like, and that's probably why I love prayer is mm. just to that we would be one with the Father as Jesus is one mm. and just to sit in that space. Mm. Um, that's great. Does that answer the question? It does, because again, for a lot of us here, the idea of a campus pastor, it's still new, still a bit yeah. confusing. And so it's thinking about, so, you know, what is Judy bringing to the table? And if I was just teasing that out a little bit more, I've intentionally, I wanted to look for someone with a real pastoral and spiritual growth, kind of spiritual formation kind of skill set, because the gift that Judy offers, and you heard her say that the gift is to tease out the gift in other people and to help people grow in their faith. And so what I'm really hoping for and imagining in this next season as Judy steps into this is more opportunities for you to go deeper and for you to encounter God and for you to discover more about who you are as well in Christ. And these are gifts that I know Judy loves to bring out in people. And uh, I'm so excited to see our church community go deeper together because of her investment. Um, so, uh, Judy, probably just two last questions. I mean, uh, firstly, what do you think God might be wanting to say to us as a church community in this season? Um, anything you'd like to share on that front? Well, I think um, like you've, you've said it throughout what you've shared today is that we are in a new season mm. and it's, it's not like there is a structure change, but um, there's actually a season change. Mm. There is a season change. There is a season change. Yeah. And I, I've been thinking um, even like last week, it was a really cold day, wasn't there? Like felt like it was snowing. I was like, yeah. what's going on? And um and sometimes, like, in between the season change, you don't know what to wear. Like, you started packing away your summer clothes and, uh, yeah. and need to pull out the winter clothes. And I just, I just feel like we're in this season of transition in seasons and we're, we're going to have to figure out what we're wearing at mm. this time. Like, mm. Um, mm. yeah, just as a team and as a mm. church that, like, how do we move into the next season well? Mm. How do we get the right clothes on? Mm. For, this, for this temperature and mm. for the change in season. Mm. Um, I just wanted to share, I've been um, just reading a passage in Song of Songs um, and I just, I love these words and I feel like these are words of God. Can you not discern this new day of destiny? Can you not discern this new day of destiny? Mm. Breaking forth around you, the early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth. The budding vines of new life are blooming everywhere. 
The fragrance of their flowers whispers, there is change in the air. There is change in the air. Mm. And it's not, just a, uh, it's not just a new season for the ministry team or the church corporately, but it's a, a change. It's a new season for you. Mm. That actually Jesus is inviting you into a new season right mm. now. And as I've been just sitting on that question, I think it's a, a season of uh, leaning into trusting him more which, you know, I talked about God is trustworthy. Mm. And that day, like, I'm freaking out about speaking. And, um, <laughs> and, but, uh, uh, but I feel like it's a season of leaning into trust, mm. leaning into love. Mm. But, yeah, really just leaning into trust in this new season mm. that he will direct us because I feel like we're going into a place that is unknown mm. and we don't have the GPS <laughs> and... And sometimes people say you don't need to, like, you don't need to know where you're going, but you just need to have, like, you need to know God, the God who's taking you. And sometimes do we know that God, though? Mm. Like, actually, when we go into the darkness, do we really know that he's trustworthy, that he's good, mm. that he's faithful? So I, I feel like it's a season of, of leaning into trust of, the, of who he really is, not who we think he is. Mm. So, yeah. That's great. Mm. So if I was just to bring this to a close, then I guess my last key question is, how can we as a church community be a part of that new season? Because that new season, as we're speaking about, it's for all of us, what God is doing in our community. So um, how can we be a part of that? Well, I, I have got to say that I've already loved how people have been partnering over the past few months. I, I feel like people mm. have already started to partner with what God is doing. Like we've seen so many responses to our, our messages and, and people are already wholeheartedly, they want God. So I would say continue to do what you're doing, yeah. like lean in further to what you're doing. Yeah. And, and also um, that there is an invitation to receive more of his love right now. Yeah. And how do you posture and position yourself to do that? So I'm always going to be challenging you from up here. Like how do you posture and position yourself mm. to receive more of his love? Mm. Because we love him because he first loved us. Mm. And even though like we've done the first love series and yeah. it's about our, our posture towards his heart, I, I think there is like we love him because he first loved us. Mm. So as a church, how can you posture yourself? Mm. How can you hear the invitation of God? And I guess I want to um, also just invite you to talk to God because – you are in a new season, ask him how can you partner with him at this time. Mm. Like he wants to talk to you. Mm. It might be a bus, might be a puzzle piece on the floor. <laughs> it might be like, you know, catching a fish. Um, like <laughs> God wants to speak to us. Like he is, yeah, at the edge of his seat wanting to talk to us. Mm. He's a good dad. Mm. So I would encourage you to lean into God. And to hear what he's saying, like what does he want you to partner with in this season? Mm. Um, mm. There will yeah. definitely, and I, I also, what like when you get those stirrings, like talk to your life group leaders, like mm. maybe, you know, help that they can help to tease it out as well or talk to one of the ministry team. But my heart is that practically I will always want to walk alongside people. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, we, I would love that each of us walk alongside each other. Mm. And that we together tease out what, what is God saying to us? Mm. How can we hear him? Mm. And just position ourselves for more. Because mm. there is always more with God. Yeah. And there's always so much more. Yeah. Mm. So like good. deeper and deeper. Okay, I can feel my boss is winding up now. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, just Who knew I you? was a preacher? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I never wanted the mic. <laughs> Well, what I want to do now is I just want to invite uh, two people up who are just going to um, just share some words. So I'm going to invite uh, Kim Dixon, who's here on behalf of the Churches of Christ Network team. And I'm going to invite Anne Willett, one of our elders, to come up so they can have a chance to speak into this. So uh, come on up. And uh, Anne, I might hand to you and then I'll hand to Kim. But you can both, both join us up here. <laughs> I had... Um... <clears throat> I'd never met Judy until she first came to this church. Mm. Yeah, okay. mm. The first time I met her, we were doing the series, Remember Freedom in Christ, mm. and I gave a message on forgiveness and you all came up with your pieces of dissolving paper and put in the bowl. So that was the first time I met her and we just seemed to um, connect, to click. 
So fast forward many months, she ran down the corridor one day and said, oh, I've got something to share with you. Guess what Ryan just asked me? <laughs> he wants to appoint a campus pastor and he wants it to be me. <laughs> and I had two impressions quickly. One of them was that Judy was standing with one foot raised. She wasn't just standing. She had one foot up in the air and she was saying to God, where do you want me to put the, my foot? What direction do you want me to go? Mm. I didn't know that the day before she'd been writing in her journal just about that. Mm. The other thing I had was 1 Peter 5, which I knew said, be a shepherd of God's flock that's under your care, not because you must, but because you are willing. Mm. And so I said to her, do you want to do this? Mm. Are you willing to do this? Mm. And, of course, she said, yes. <laughs> and I'm sure I cried. Well, we both <laughs> cried. <laughs> Um, yeah. And Judy wasn't familiar with that passage then, but I know she is now because I know she's poured over it and studied it and studied it and studied it. And that's one of the strengths she brings to us is the depth of her own devotional life mm. and reading the Bible and expecting God to speak to her through it. And so in 1 Peter 5 it goes on to say, not because you must but because you're willing, eager to serve, be a good example and be clothed with humility. Mm. So that's what it's asking of the shepherd. And then it says what God will do and it says God will make you strong, mm. firm and steadfast. Mm. And she just showed a minute ago when she was giving a sermon on, um, I've forgotten what it was anyway, but she was freaking out was mm. the expression that you used. So I didn't really know that she was freaking out and that morning I came up to her in church and I prayed a verse over her from Isaiah 40 that says, he gives strength mm. to the weary and increases the power of the weak. And so there's been other examples like that between us where God has just connected us together. And I just see that God is placing on Judy a, a cape, a shepherding cape, a mantle to care for us. And I just see a picture of her with this big cape that when we are weak and frail that she will include us in that cape until we're able to stand on our own two feet again. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's a picture I have for you. The other picture I have when I was thinking about this yesterday was from Isaiah 58, you will be like a well-watered garden. Mm. It says, the Lord will guard you always. Mm. You will be a well-watered garden in a dry and weary land. Mm. And I see the dry and weary land as us, that there's times when we will be dry and weary and that Judy will be the well water garden. Mm. And that comes from the depth of her own relationship with God and the time she spends in her own devotional life mm. so that she can be the well water garden that is fed from God so that she can feed us. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Mm. Beautiful, yes. <laughs> Thank you. What a rich, beautiful pictures and affirmations and blessings. Mm. Um, it's great joy to be here um, as Judy's friend, but also on behalf of our network of Churches mm. of Christ, um, just to affirm Judy and celebrate with you all this morning. Mm. Um, I've had the pleasure of getting to know Judy in a couple of different ways. We've been in formation groups together, mm. which means that we've shared the depths of our souls and God's activity over many, quite a few years now, um, which has been very precious to me. And Judy has been a great encouragement in my own journey with God. Um, and then we worked briefly together on the network resourcing team. Um, and now getting to see Judy Blossom, um, every time I've been a couple of times and watching you preach is a whole other side of you that I didn't know until now. And so it's just, yeah, just been so good. So um, as I was praying for you this morning, Judy, I was just, the question came to me, what qualifies you to be sitting here in this moment? And um, it's easy to feel inadequate in moments like these. Um, and I'm tempted to stand here and remind you of all the gifts and skills and study and experience that has led you very legitimately to this moment. Um, and that list would be long. But instead there were two realities um, that stand above the rest that I wanted to affirm. And in many ways they've already been said, but I just trust that God is 
honing the point <laughs> this morning. <laughs> yeah. um, I think there's a particular work that God is doing in our network of churches in this season. And it's a work of integration, of healing and of unity. And it's a restoration of the soul of who we are as a network mm. that will bring life. Mm. And within that wider work, I believe women are especially on God's heart. And I see that he is restoring the value and the voices of women in leadership mm. in our churches. Judy, I have had a front row seat in this work of God within your own story and I have sat in awe with you, speechless, as you, as you have told the story that, it ha that, at, that at times you have expressed has felt too good to be true of how God has led you to this people in this time. You could not have orchestrated this. <laughs> My friend. And so this morning, I hope that you can receive in every fibre of your body that it is good and it is true. And Judy, as you embraced the opportunity to fill in for Rachel, I watched you do more than a job. I watched you find a new home. And I remember you saying to me, and this was the very moment I knew you were called to this place, you said to me, I'm going to find it hard to leave because I've come to love these people. Judy, mm. mm. love is what qualifies you. Mm. The presence and mystery of love deeply in you and ministering through you. You draw people into the presence of great love and that is the core work of a pastor. Mm. Judy, may you continue to learn what it is and teach us mm. <laughs> by your example to move and minister at the speed of love. Mm. I think this is what you have <laughs> to teach us. Yeah. In Bye. your leadership. <laughs> yeah. And it's a journey. Mm. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to finish by reading uh, a blessing from John O'Donoghue. And this is one that we've reflected on many times together. And I it just God reminded me of it today. And it's uh, entitled, For One's Calling, The Priesthood. May the blessings released through your hands... Cause windows to open in darkened minds. May the sufferings your calling brings be but winter before the spring. May the companionship of your doubt restore what your beliefs leave out. May the secret hungers of your heart harvest from emptiness its sacred fruit. May your solitude be a voyage into the wilderness and wonder of God. May your words have the prophetic edge to enable the heart to hear itself. May the silence where your calling dwells foster your freedom in all you do and feel. May you find worlds full of divine warmth to close the dying in the language of dawn. And may the slow light of the Eucharist be a sure shelter around your future. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Kim. Mm. What a powerful blessing that was. I'll have to get a copy of that from you. <laughs> so church, um, what we want to do now is um, we sort of pray just to bring this to a close and to officially commission Judy into this role. And so as we do this, I'm just going to invite um, our board or our elders or some of our team. And if there's anyone else here that would like to come and, and lay hands on Judy, like we, we can have an all-in hand laying session if you would like. So why don't you come forward? And uh, as you do that, I'm just going to read a scripture passage that I would like to, I suppose, just speak over Judy and speak over this role as we now commission her into this. So uh, if you could bring up the next slide, please. Uh, Acts chapter 20. 
verse 28. And uh, Judy, this is um, Paul commissioning uh, at the end of his ministry in the book of Acts and to the elders and the leaders of the church. And Paul says, so guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. Now, I realize this passage was written to somebody else, but there is power in this for us here and for our church in this season. And so church family, we are commissioning and appointing Judy to care for and guard God's people here in Campbelltown, to feed and to shepherd God's flock, his church here in Campbelltown that he purchased over which the Holy Spirit is appointing you today. We're just catching up with that with a formal ceremony here. And so may God bless you and work through you powerfully. And we as your church leadership and your family, we're so grateful to have you here. And we're fully behind what God is doing in your life. And church, we believe this is a brand new and exciting season. Why don't we lay hands? And I'm just going to pray for Judy. And you can extend a hand forward if you like to as well, church. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness, for what you are doing in our church community, for what you're doing in our lives, and for what you are doing in our church's leadership. We thank you that you have brought Judy to us. We recognize, Lord, your, your sovereign plan in bringing her here. God, we recognize your fingerprints in the appointment of this role. And so we pray for a blessing upon Judy. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fill her and to work through her. Lord, to benefit our whole church community and our wider community around us. We pray that you would draw us deeper into knowing you through this shift. We pray as a church community that you would stir up passion amongst us, passion to pray and to love one another and to position ourselves to receive more of who you are. And so God, as a wider church community, we want to surrender and open ourselves up mm -hmm. to this new season. Mm -hmm. And we thank you in advance because we don't know what it looks like, but we know that because you are here, it is good and it is right. Mm -hmm. We pray that you would protect Judy from the work of the enemy. Lord, we know the devil wants to cut down leadership and, and to criticize leadership. We want to pray that she would be deaf to the voice of the enemy and that she would have ears to hear what you are saying. Mm -hmm. And so Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you have purchased this church, your people, with your blood. We thank you that we can be here in a moment such as this, and we thank you for what you are doing. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Can we just thank her again, church? All right. We're going to hop down, and um, Judy was going to quickly say something as we now go into a time of worship. Oh, look at all this stuff here. <laughs> I, um, as I've just been thinking about this, I, I really felt that I'd love to pray for you uh, and speak a blessing over you um, from Numbers, but also from Ephesians. So I just wonder if you, um, if you feel comfortable to close your eyes and, and maybe just open your hands and just as a posture of receiving from God today. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is His love. May you experience the love of Christ. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
protect you, sustain you and guard you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you with favour. May He be gracious to you, surrounding you with loving kindness. The Lord lift up His countenance, His face upon you with divine approval and give you peace and a tranquil heart and life. I bless you. I bless you today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.